Disney stock is up 6.7% after reporting earnings today, and it's now grown 15.5% over the past month. However, Disney has been a terrible investment over the past five and even 10 years. The 10-year total return for Disney stock, including reinvested dividends, is 32.91%. That is horribly lagging the market. Over the past five years, the stock has a negative 23.1% total return. And it actually is pretty simple why this has happened. First off, we had a global pandemic where the company had to shut down the majority of its parks business. And that is a major cash generator for the company. Also during that time, movie theaters were shut down and the entire movie business in terms of box office took many years to recover. Also, the entire legacy media industry has gone through a massive transition away from cable. Cord cutting has been a decade-long trend that still continues today. As the world has gotten high-speed internet and we spend more and more of our life online, digital media is becoming the dominant platform. Legacy media outlets like Disney have seen a continued decline in cable subscribers, which hurts their affiliate fees and makes it harder to sell advertising. Disney owns several cable networks, including ESPN, ABC, and Disney Channel. The king of cable is ESPN, and they have definitely been holding on the best of all the peers, but this has still been a headwind for the company. And in response to that, Disney shifted towards streaming. They launched Disney Plus, which became a massive success in terms of total subscribers, and they gained full control of Hulu. But this was an extremely costly transition. Disney was losing billions and billions of dollars a quarter on their streaming services. In Q4 2022, they lost $1.5 billion dollars in just that quarter. This was a major drag to the company's earnings. However, when Bob Iger returned, they started to focus on profitability and marched their way all the way up. And last quarter for Q3 2024, they had their first profitable quarter for streaming. And in their newly announced Q4 2024, they made $300 million profit. That was a $700 million improvement year over year. And as you can see, cutting away on those losses helped improve Disney's earnings. The financials at Disney are now improving. But the biggest piece of news from this quarter was the guidance. The company announced that they expect high single-digit earnings per share growth in fiscal 2025, which will accelerate to double-digit growth in fiscal 2026 and 2027. And it's that news which sent the stock up today. But is it finally time to actually buy Disney stock? I'll discuss that in today's video. On top of that, I'll break down the latest earnings report, share the story of my mistake investing in Disney and what exactly went wrong, and find Finally, give my thoughts on a new interview from the Disney CFO that just aired this morning. Let's roll the intro. My name is Zach, this is Dividend Data, and you should leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the video. Throughout, I'll be using my stock research tool, which is available at DividendData.com. I just announced my new AI investment analyst where you can ask Dividend Data any investing question. And I just want to remind everyone that there is currently a 50% off sale where you can get 50% off for life. Click the link in the description or pinned comment to redeem the deal, or sign up and use the promo code AI at checkout. As many of you longtime viewers know, I've had a lot of learning lessons from investing in the Walt Disney Company. First off, it was my worst investing mistake. And you may say, oh, you're only down 3%. Well, I was actually down quite a bit more, but I sold my worst performing batch of stock in order to offset some of my capital gains for taxes. I covered that in my last portfolio update video. So if you want a full explanation, go watch that. But what happened with me and Disney is something that really every investor will go through at one point. I got far too excited about the top line growth of their new streaming business, but I completely turned turned a blind eye to the massive losses they were taking. And I did not at all expect that as they would continue to grow subscribers, they would actually lose more and more money. This company was spending like crazy. So I bought a bunch of Disney stock all the way from fall 2020 through early 2022. And my prices on that were terrible. And it's probably my largest loss in terms of absolute dollars. Longtime viewers may remember uh, Intel, AT&T, and uh, Walgreens. 
but I cut my losses on those pretty early on a relative basis, and they were smaller positions of mine. But today, in November 2024, the world is different. Disney is not losing billions of dollars on a streaming service every quarter. In fact, it's actually a profitable growth business for the company, and it is second to only Netflix in terms of streaming subscribers and revenue. And Netflix is a $357 billion company that is extremely profitable. And this is a streaming only business. So it's been shown that streaming works. Streaming can be an incredibly profitable business. Netflix is currently valued $150 billion more than Disney. And Disney is also a far more diversified business with its gigantic parks and merchandise empire, which is, in my opinion, pretty underrated, plus slowly declining but still very profitable linear TV networks. And I think it's incredibly reasonable to say that in five years, Disney's combined streaming business alone could be as valuable as Netflix's is today. Disney Plus has only existed for five years. Netflix has been in streaming for over 15 years, and they are not done growing either. Netflix is a growth business for the future. They are expected to have double-digit earnings per share growth each of the next five years. The core business model of Disney actually works, and it works very well. When they produce a hit movie like Inside Out 2 or Deadpool and Wolverine, there's the opportunity to make a large amount of money at the box office. And then when that movie goes to the streaming service, it can bring a new surge of subscribers and viewership. And as their brands and intellectual property become more popular, they can be put into parks and merchandise. It is a pretty simple flight flywheel, and when it works, it works well. And every single new movie gets added to their massive library, which continues to generate viewership and keep subscribers engaged. And a great piece of content can be rather timeless. And Disney's existing library already has hundreds of timeless movies and TV shows. And all of this is now being built through Disney+. Plus. That's the core growth business of the future. They now have 174 million global subscribers, and I believe that includes the number of Hulu subscribers as well and they're starting to bundle that together and you can actually just watch Hulu inside of Disney Plus. And the company is also integrating ESPN content onto the Disney Plus platform. And in fall 2025, they're planning to launch ESPN as a flagship standalone streaming service. And you will be able to bundle that with Disney Plus and likely watch it within Disney Plus if you're already a member. And the company has been investing in their advertising technology so they sell ads across all all of their streaming services. So it's a pretty simple growth business for streaming. It's already profitable. They are going to continue to grow subscribers and then over time, slowly charge more for membership. It's a pretty simple formula. And of course, every piece of content is not going to be a hit, but every single time you do have a hit like Inside Out 2 or Deadpool and Wolverine, it powers that whole flywheel. But as I mentioned, the most important part of this earnings report was the guidance. As an overall business, Disney saw operating income grow 23% year over year to $3.6 billion in the latest quarter. And for the full year 2024, they saw $15.6 billion of operating income and 21% growth year over year. The only lag on this business is the decline in cable TV. For the full year 2024, Linear Network saw a 9% decline in revenue year over year, and they saw a 16% decline in operating income year over year. But it should be noted that in terms of revenue, Disney's direct-to-consumer business is over twice the size of Linear Networks, and it's on its way to being three times larger. And given the pace of improved profitability, it will likely surpass Linear Networks in quarterly profitability sometime in fiscal 2025. And if it's not then, it will be in 2026. Disney's entertainment business saw over a 100% increase in operating income year over year. And that's because they cut streaming losses from negative $2.5 billion to positive $143 million. But I want to reiterate something I mentioned at the beginning of the video, which is the most important part of the earnings report was their guidance. They announced that they expect high single digit earnings per share growth in fiscal 2025 and double digit growth in fiscal 2026 through 27. And for us dividend investors, they also announced that they are targeting dividend growth that tracks their earnings growth, so expect double-digit dividend growth over the coming years. And in fiscal 2025, they're targeting $3 billion in stock repurchases. So the company is now actually generating a lot of cash and returning it to shareholders. And this decade of terrible total return for Disney stock may be in the rearview mirror. The Disney CFO, Hugh Johnston, was just on CNBC this morning to discuss the quarter, and I thought he gave some very great commentary about this future earnings guidance and how Disney feels about their growth prospects. And then as they continued down and saw the guidance, not just for this year, but I think more importantly for 
26 and 27 double digit EPS numbers, they said, oh, maybe this is uh, this, this is looking better than we thought. So let's talk about that. What are the challenges that you're actually you're confronting right now? And what does that actually look like? And then what gives you the confidence that the numbers are going to look so meaningfully better when you get into 26 and 27? Well, I, I think the fact that we've had such a strong 24 overall has been an important part of, of the guidance that we're giving, right? So if you, if you think of the big initiatives that we've invested in, putting creativity back at the center of the company and the couple of billion dollar movies and all the Emmys have actually driven terrific cre- creativity results out of the company. Then on top of that, we said we wanted to improve streaming profitability and we're clearly doing that in a, in a substantive way. And then we're investing in the parks because we have such great returns in that business, whether it's theme parks or cruises or, or even consumer products. So if you put all of those pieces together, I think 24 in many ways was the pivot point for the Walt Disney Company. And we have enough confidence now in the results that we're seeing to say we really can guide for the next couple of years. I agree. I do think 2024 was the pivot point for the Walt Disney Company. Once streaming became a profitable growth business, the whole story and investment case will change. It may take some time for Wall Street to adjust to it, but it definitely will change. Now, this is incredibly unusual. I've covered the Disney, Walt Disney Company for years. You, you almost never have given guidance this far out. What made you decide now not just to guide for next year, but over the next three years? And are you concerned about things like hiccups in consumer spending or even a, a potential pullback in the economy to impact that very long-term guidance? Well, we, we always are going to worry about that. But that said, you have to make a set of assumptions around what the consumer is going to do. And we see a consumer that's slowly but steadily likely to get better. And that's certainly embedded in the guidance. Beyond that, with the significant investments that we've made to build a DTC business, and it's, we need to remember, it's only been five years since we started that business. So it's relatively new. We took some operating losses to stand it up. But now it's a business with 175 million subscribers. It's turned profitable over the course of the last year. And we see lots of profitability in the future. So the investments we've made there... And then on top of that, the investments that we're making and are going to continue to make in cruise ships and parks, we felt like we needed to give investors not just the current business results, but to set an but expectation have, on what the return is on those. You got streaming and ESPN all figured out. We, at, at this point, I, what, what, th- what I think this means is if you can say double digits, that's like the base case for you. <laughs> You're trying to drag me up already, Joe? I'm trying to no, get you to even true. say it's pretty good, but if you're confident in saying that, I think you're, you're. If you're confident in saying the low end of things, I think you think it could even be better. But I'm amazed that you. Plus, you got whether movies succeed and studio stuff. It's, it's although it, the visibility look, is very hard in that business. It, it is, but if you look at what we did in terms of creativity, particularly in the movie business, right? We were generating too much content three or four years ago in order to feed the streaming service, and frankly, quality suffered to some degree. When Bob came back, he made it clear we were going to prioritize by virtue of less quantity and better quality. And that's kind of what you've seen, whether it's all the TV shows that have generated the Emmys or whether it's Inside Out 2 or whether it's uh, Deadpool. And now we obviously Moana have, hey, yeah, we, we've Moana. got hey, uh, Mufasa as well as Moana 2 coming out. There, we have a lot of confidence that the creative process now is really tightly wound. Right. We, we do maybe five movies, big movies a year. I think you'll probably see two great ones, two good ones, and then maybe one that's that's just okay. I actually completely agree that they have a chance to beat that guidance. He also mentioned some very important points about reducing costs and doing less content overall. And that not only helps save money, but it improves focus so that a higher percentage of your content are those great hits that really power that flywheel. But that said, the reality is also that entertainment's a very hit and miss business. And every single year, there will probably be a few duds. And I'm about to put out a bold prediction, which is really not that bold at all. Right now is probably the best time to buy Disney stock in the past decade. And again, that's not saying very much because it was a terrible time to buy it all of the past decade. But that doesn't mean it has to be forever. Since 1990, the stock still has a 1,471% total return. And Disney's a far older company than that and saw great returns in its early history. I will continue to own a small portion of the Walt Disney Company in my dividend growth stock portfolio. But listen, I don't blame you if you want to avoid this whole legacy media business entirely. Even streaming is going to be a competitive landscape. And I would actually put my money on YouTube rather than Disney Plus or Netflix. 
Speaking of YouTube, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video. I'm really focused on making great stock analysis content for you guys. All of that is available for free and you can also join our free email newsletter which sends out every single time I put a video. And if you want to use the stock research tool I showed throughout the video, then sign up at DividendData.com. I'm currently doing a 50% off sale so you can get 50% off for life. And you can use the new AI investment research analyst I showed throughout. Just click the link in the description and pin comment to get the sale directly or use the promo code AI at checkout. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.